So sound is just vibrating air molecules. So how does the speaker produce sound? Well, it vibrates. It vibrates. And as it vibrates, it'll vibrate the nearby air molecules. And then as these air molecules vibrate, they'll vibrate and vibrate these air molecules, which will vibrate these air molecules. So we'll have that propagation of those vibrating air molecules. And that's what sound is. And something important to realize is we'll have these cycles of compressed air, then uncompressed air, then compressed air, then uncompressed air, then compressed air, and etc. So what is going to be the velocity of the sound wave? What's going to be the velocity? How fast is the sound going to travel? Well, it depends on, us, on the temperature. So again, if, if maybe we're in a zero degree Celsius room, the velocity of the sound will maybe be 300 meters per second. However, what if we were to increase the temperature? Maybe now we're in a, we increase the temperature to 25 degrees Celsius. Now the sound will travel at 343 meters per second. Now maybe we increase the temperature even more to maybe 100 degrees Celsius. Now if the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius, now the velocity will travel even faster at 370 meters per second. So clearly we can see the temperature has a big impact on the velocity of the sound. As we increase temperature, we increase the velocity of the sound. However, another parameter is the medium that the sound is traveling through. So let's, let's keep things consistent and say for all these examples, we're dealing with 25 degrees Celsius. So if we're in a 25 degrees Celsius room and the sound is traveling through air, through a gas, then maybe the velocity would be 343 meters per second. However, maybe again, we're still at a 25 degrees Celsius room, but maybe now we're traveling through a liquid. Maybe now we're traveling through a liquid. In a liquid, the velocity of the sound will maybe be 1,000 meters per second. So we went from a, to a liquid, now the velocity increased. Maybe now again, we're again in a 25 degrees Celsius room, but maybe now the sound is traveling through, through this block of metal. Now the sound will travel in the solid at 5,000 meters per second. So clearly we can see the medium has a big impact on the velocity of sound. And you might think, okay, so as the density increases, the velocity increases. But actually, that's not true. In reality, the velocity of sound equals the square root of the bulk modulus of the medium divided by the density of the medium. So therefore, in fact, as the density increases, the velocity decreases. So what's going on there? That's really confusing. What's going on? Why, why does it look like the velocity is increasing? Because the bulk modulus dramatically increases as we go from glass to solid. So as the bulk modulus dramatically increases, the velocity increases. So, so that's what's going on. So now let's do some specific examples. But first, let's say for the rest of this video, let's say we're, tra we're dealing with sound traveling in air in a room that's 25 degrees Celsius. Then we know if these conditions are constant, then we know the speed of the sound will be 343 meters per second, which will not be changing. So now I want to introduce you to a really important formula. The velocity of sound equals the frequency of the sound multiplied by the wavelength of the sound. So again, what is the wavelength of a sound? So let's say the speaker creates sound. We know the sound is traveling at 343 meters per second. What is the wavelength of the sound? Well, again, we explain how we have compressed regions, then we have non-compressed regions, then we have another compressed region, then we have uncompressed region, then compressed region. So the length between two of these compressed regions, this length is referred to as the wavelength. It's, it's these repeating units. So, so that's what the wavelength is. And what is the frequency? Well, the way I like to think of frequency is I like to imagine, so the sound is traveling at 343 meters per second, and it has this given wavelength. Then if we were to stand right here, and as the sound traveled with this wavelength, if we were to count in one second, how many of these compressed regions passed this region in one second? How many of these compressed regions passed? And that would give us the hertz. So maybe if, in, if this, tra this wave is traveling at this 343 meters per second, and maybe in one second, 10 of these compressed regions passed, then this sound would have a, a frequency of 10 hertz. And the way I like to remember this formula is I know velocity is meters per second. I know frequency is inverse second, one over second. And we know wavelength is meters. It's unit length, it's meters. So meters times one over second gives us velocity. So that's how I like to remember this formula. So now let's do some more examples. So again, we know if, we're, if the temperature is constant and we're traveling in air, then we know the speed of the sound will always be 343 meters per second. 
However, the frequency of the sound can vary. Maybe the speaker creates one sound with a certain frequency, then it creates another sound with a different frequency. Something important to realize is all those different frequencies that are produced will all travel at 343 meters per second, because again, the temperature and medium is constant. So we see how frequency and wavelength are intimately related. They're intimately related. For example, if we increase the wavelength of, of sound, then the frequency will simultaneously decrease for this value to still equal 343 meters per second. So again, this, sound, this speaker can create lots of sounds. Maybe it creates one sound with a certain wavelength, then creates another sound with a different wavelength and another sound with a different wavelength. All of these sounds are traveling at 343 meters per second. But if the wavelength increases of this sound, then it will have a relatively decreased frequency. So, so let's do an example. Let's say we have this guitar. Let's say we have this guitar, and let's say we, we played a note. Let's say we played a C note. So, so we did the correct chord to create a C note. And again, that sound, that C note of sound, will travel at 343 meters per second. We know that's constant. But again, it's going to have a certain frequency, and it's going to have a certain wavelength. And again, we, we see how the frequency multiplied by wavelength has to equal... The, this 343 meters per second velocity, because we know the velocity is constant for all, it doesn't matter if we play a C note, a G note, an A note, the velocity of all these sounds must equal 343 meters per second. So we see if we have a certain frequency, this happens to be the frequency of the C note. So at this particular frequency, at this velocity, we must have a wavelength of 1.3 meters per second. However, we see, maybe we, this time we played a G note. A G note will still travel at 343 meters per second, but maybe this G note has a wavelength of 0 0.87 meters. So we see as the, as the wavelength decreases, we see the frequency must increase because this still must equal 343 meters per second. So we see how wavelength and frequency are intimately related. However, if we play a C note, it will be sound with a velocity of 343 meters per second with a frequency of 262 hertz. However, if we play G note, it will be sound traveling at 343 meters per second with a frequency of 393 hertz. And again, so it's this frequency that determines the pitch of the sound, the note. It's, it's the frequency that, that is important, which again is related to the wavelength. But again, so again, it, it's as we increase the frequency, we increase the pitch, and different frequencies create different notes. And again, so, so we play a C note. So the C note travels at 343 meters per second, and the C note has a wavelength of 1.3 meters. So we know if we played the C note and the C note was traveling at this velocity with this uh, wavelength, if we were to count per second, how many of these, these compressed regions passed per second under these conditions, we would see 262 of these, these compressed regions will pass this region per second. However, now we played a G note, so now that G note is traveling at, again, 343 meters per second with a wavelength of 0 0.87 meters, and then if we were to count in one second, if we were to count in this region in one second, how many of these compressed regions passed per second? We would count 393 of these compressed regions passed per second. And we see it has a higher frequency because both of these are traveling at the same velocity, but if this has a smaller wavelength, then we would imagine per second more of these guys would pass. So therefore, we would have a higher frequency. So sound also has an intensity. So again, the way I like to think about this is this, is this speaker has a, certain, has a certain intensity. So it creates sound with a certain intensity.